what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Because we're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now I look like she was never gonna die. By the way, no, I want to find for a resolution. I don't know. I, just, she, I think about doing things with in, with mind. intention. And there so, is intention in that. It's just a weird like I don't think there's a solution, but you guys should really be motivated and educate and do all these things for something that's never gonna I'm be. I'm not asking out. you I to do anything. I'm this doing what I, I need to do for me I, and I my agree. future. But there are people. Do you mean the breaking out that she is starts too. are going to resonate with them. The points that she makes. That's what I'm saying. Thinking, are you thinking about a solution like in she might general not be or like? At all. I'm thinking. Okay. What I'm saying is. I'm thinking very small. I'm this very is what small I'm minded. thinking. You know. She just had a tantrum. There is We're going. Sure. Racism isn't going anywhere. It's never leaving. There is never going to go anywhere because it's something that is Starting taught. We are taught every day. <laughs> I mean, not even every day, but like our children, kids in school are being taught, you know. That's what I'm saying. We're talking, or I'm saying literally. That's not Within large. Kendall has a son who's going to be going to school soon. Tiffany's son is in school she, now. She's like, wait. That's not that, that large. It's not that far. I, I guess I'm thinking like, I you have, have brothers. I exactly. Have brothers. But that's what I can have a conversation with my brothers, right? But it's going to be changing and, re- and solve something in them. Like today, when I said, I think my little brothers are going to be misogynist, and you're like, well, they're little, and you can talk to them, and there can be a solution and a resolution to that. So I'm thinking that, so, like, can you don't think I'm saying not on a in society is racism. Not, not for that's racism. What, that's what I'm saying. But racism I think that's, isn't that's a hard anywhere. thing for racism because racism crosses economic lines. I think you're more conscious. So, I don't know. And what I'm maybe saying, I kind of believe, and in you people. can't. But no, I mean, but I'm I not saying like, that people can't change. What I like, I said. Racism isn't going anywhere. Is there a solution for racism? No, like there, it's not going anywhere. But does that right. mean I'm not? But this is what I'm saying. That's why I will still fight for that change. So I'm going to be at a small level. I'm going to meet with piece by piece. We're going to do visuals. We're going but to that's do whatever. What, so we're that's what I'm saying. Maybe there's an, a misunderstanding. That's, that's what, what I'm I asking. Said. I said that. But that she started off with saying, "I think I'm already doing your suggestion." I think I'm already living out in my life, living out that thing of where I'm I'm Just not trying to solve individual. racism as, on a That's whole, but I'm, I'm living my life That's, on a smaller scale. So when I scale, asked, like, we should so talk about solution, else? and you said there's not a solution, then I'm like, it's in your backtrack, because there is... For so you you're saying for like a... Like, so she's there's, large it's not scale, a solution. There's not a solution. I, I wouldn't say that would be a solution. It's something that you can solution. do right now. Like just having conversations. It's a band aid, but it's not. It's a band aid, but it's not like a so that a vaccine that's gonna yeah. kill it. Does that make sense? It's something that you can. It better not be a do. virus, because then it's still in the bloodstream. Girl, it's a virus. <laughs> this is a virus. I don't know. I don't know because I see what you're not, saying I'm, as to like why. If you are saying that you have no hope in something, then why are you working towards hope in something if you don't think that it's ever gonna exist? If I it get that make argument. Any change because. But I, but even I would thinking, argue like, that even like, always okay, there's this generation, right, of people that hold these, like, like, scary, racist things that are like, no, you ain't gonna ever, like, you're never, ever gonna change. But I'm saying, like, think, like, our kids, kids like, you're saying, like, never, ever. It's just gonna well, always be. And it's like, is there not stuff that we can do now? Maybe we don't get to see it, right? Like, I will probably never live in a world with it. That but is yeah. it to say that the things that we do do not eventually get to that place? That's where, because it's like that would then be the purpose for you to do things, even if you're not going to see it, is that eventually these little things then are going to build up, build to, up to something that is better than what is right now. Because if you don't really think that, then you wouldn't really do those things. Because then it's like, well, why? Like, but I think no. that's how people define, I think that's how people, A, define solution, and B, have a time period in their mind of what that yeah. means. Yeah, if you think is, of, like, I'm going to see it, no. yeah. I'm like, I don't think I'll see it, but I also would hope that you at least feel that by doing, like, people, doing these things that you understand. You and, really got to learn to finish your sentences. Sorry. You literally just stopped in the middle of her sentence. I feel like doing, like, piece by, and I, you're doing, doing piece, piece by piece. piece. And whatever work we are all individually doing, 
that know does every single person that listens to this podcast is like, I'm not. Like, I get it. No, I'm up. I'm, that's, that's my cousin. I'm all the way up. He was like, I'm up. <laughs> no, but it's like, I I don't know. I guess maybe I live in this life. I, I, I think it's a I think it, it comes way. with a, I think, but it, it comes with a frustration though of when, if it's something that you're trying to live in day in and day out, there's going to come to a point where that's going to get real tiring. And it's going to get real exhausting because you can see those changes maybe in the people that you talk to or the kids that you affect or all these things. But it's... On a wider it, scale. It, I think it takes it still takes a toll to your heart that you're not really going to be able to see it as a systemic change. I think you're still allowed to hurt for that. And I think... You live in that tension. I don't think the answer is small or large. I think it exists in the middle that there's this tension that we exist in that, okay, we're going to struggle, we're going to hope, but we're going to struggle because we have hope. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're struggling why, because we have hope. Thank you, Natalie. That's basically it. I don't feel like, okay, just, I don't know any other way to say it. Like, at the end of the day, whether I live in this, new found world or not I'm going to continue to put my efforts towards a change but do I believe I'm going to see it no so maybe that I don't maybe I didn't word it the way I don't know. it just seemed very pessimistic like, it's never going to change I don't know it, it was almost like there's not going to be it's never going to be resolved so we're just that's what I'm saying doing things in vain in the meantime like we're just going to do it because it's kind of but, but would you? But really... even, but even if you really thought that racism was never gonna exist again, I'm not gonna just would not you, do anything. Would either. you not do anything? Because you still have to live your life. Exactly. So would you not still <laughs> try to do things to make your life right now temporarily better, even if even if on a larger scale you thought this will never change? Of course you will, because you have to live through that day. So you're gonna try your best to she do what you can. To change the world, but you can really think, I think on we're a asking larger scale. To, in my head, in my heart, it's like we're talking about all this. So, and I'm not saying that no one's not doing anything. I'm just saying we're talking about all this. What are we going to do? I guess as people right people now to do so. You know what I mean? Like I just don't want to say the word solution because okay. there is it's Ex- no take out solution. solution. What are we going to do to? And can I what are power? we doing now? What, what we're Improve. Doing? What are we doing now? Improve. Well, that's what the sorry. That's what the conversation I was trying to have. Yeah. Is, like, what is that we? Yeah, have that's to, what. What else? That's what I was trying to open yeah. Or what, what else? Power. What else can you do? What can you do differently? Like I think for me, even when you were talking about okay, talking about your little your little brothers being misogynist or whatever, and it's like <laughs> okay, so we talk to kids about racism now, right? But like. I think as black people, we talk about it in this victim sense of like, beware of the cops. This is what you have to do. We have to have these conversations to stay alive. But what if we included in that conversation the education that would allow them when they're going through school and they're growing up to to be in those jobs that are going to make those changes or to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, you. Uh, I think you have to have the conversation with them of, you need to be respectful. You need to not resist arrest. I don't want them to have that conversation, but I think you have to because yeah. that's the reality that you live in. But alongside of that conversation, are you having a real conversation with them about what's the actual definition of racism? Right. It's not just someone calling you a nigger. That's that's like a sim- that's like a symptom of it. But is that the root and the core of what racism is? No. And are we teaching kids that? So do we add that into our education? I or think can so. It be all of it. Like that's what, that's and maybe I'm just completely I just optimistic and I'm okay with that. That it yeah, all too. that it all matters. If that's just a conversation, if it's right. education reform, if, if it's, it's some actually being out there doing something, just do something. Whatever type of action that brings you peace, that makes you fulfills you, do that. Yeah. Like and I think it's it hard. Matters. I think it's a a conversation worth having because especially when it comes to people to white people that are not people of color sometimes i feel like 
they feel very attacked in that sense of, okay, I understand that you're angry and I understand what this problem is, but I don't understand how I can fix it. I don't understand how I can be, not be in this privilege, but it's like, they, I don't think they under, they don't understand how to have that conversation yet of when you hear your white friends saying something Say or right. or even if you catch yourself in privilege mm-hmm. and you catch yourself, don't internalize and go, I'll do better next Why time. Apologize to that person. That's the part that I don't understand. This is I think I think people take like, it personal because of the language that's used. But okay, I just use it as an example. Clearly, I am of a fairer complexion. If somebody says something about light skin and racial privilege, I don't take that personal. I just do something about it. Like so as a white person mad because black people are mad about white privilege, why are you taking it personal? Like, do something. Speak up about it. Like, yes, white, white complexion people have privilege in different aspects of society, so do something about it. White people have privilege. That is a fact. That is indisputable. So, if you can't change that, then do something about yeah. it. Yeah. The, they were saying but I think the that's what the conversation is that we want to have, right? Is like, what are, you, what are they doing like right to change there. that? Okay, so what, how can we help just white people be better talking. allies? We just have to start talking. I think, like, okay, this is a, a part of me. I don't want to say what the other part is. But <laughs> one thing <laughs> is um, right, for so sure, like. like no, thank you. Um, even for that, our, okay, so nice here, thing. for the, the white friends that we have, if you're listening, we're um, still here after all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, we should hey, tell them, hey, at one thirty-five, we start really being nice to you people. guys. We went. If you're still, you know, tuning in after all the the backlash that you may have felt, <laughs> first of all, we want to say, don't take this personal. This is not about don't you. Don't take it personal, okay. baby, 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 Done with you. Done with you. But keep going, Delisa. Um, <laughs> what I've seen, my friends, the I think four of them. Don't try to count. Them. Don't do it. It's not that many. I have. <laughs> I, I, I kind of want to give them a shout out because they're just so diligent in their their work. And one friend, I really just. She just speaks to my little poor heart when she like, you know, when I post things, she like responds and she's like, you know, I'm really glad I saw it. Like she, she's into it and past social media. It's not right. just reading things online and yeah. things like that. Like she's, oh my God, I didn't realize her phone. She's really into it. Like she reads books by people of color. She's like going to lectures and doing all like, she's really immersed herself in it to learn how to check her privilege and she will sit there and say oh yeah I read that book it would really help me with understanding this this and that and now I can check my privilege here and there and she lives in like the midwest right now and so she's always having to like check people and one thing that she she does is she has the conversation she's not afraid to share a story or a video or whatever on her yeah. social media account in person she will have that conversation with people and that is something that I feel like, like we've been saying, like, you know, it's, don't take it personal. Like, a big chunk of it is white people having to look past yourself because yes. it's not about you right. to mm-hmm. realize, you know, privilege. it's a bigger problem than, oh, I'm going to be rejected by my grandpa. Right. Like, okay, yeah, that does suck because grandpas matter. <laughs> <laughs> but because oh, grandpas yeah. matter. They were saying so to kind of piggyback on that in the video. Cracking code. First of all, y'all should look this video up. Um, don't mind the editing done. It. I'm pretty sure because they kept talking about Obama clearly within the last eight years, but it looks like literally it was shot in 1996. <laughs> like, I yeah, was like, she was like, uh, it was in the 90s. I was like, no, they were talking about Obama. And I was like, oh, they were. Anyways, it's the editing's a little painful, but there was a woman who was speaking about her stepsister and her stepsister was half Caucasian, half African-American and they were like shopping 
And so her sister is very good. Like, I don't like the African American. African -American. Oh you. God! What am I allowed to use? Like, Why? Because she's black. She the black say. lady. I'm sorry. I am not allowed to use African American. I didn't say you use whatever you want. I just don't. Like they don't that like term. it. Okay. This black woman. She's a black. Can I say Caucasian? No, because they're not Caucasian. They're what the white. Fuck is they're it Caucasian. Caucasian. No, Caucasian <laughs> is an actual <laughs> place. And is it called caucus? No, Caucasian. <laughs> caucus. No, where's Caucasian? No, because I had a Russian friend who, like, he really corrected me and was upset when I called him white. And he's like, "I am not white. I'm Caucasian." And I'm like, "What's the difference?" And he's like, "This is what they teach us in school. We gotta talk about those bubbles. You know, they be like." Hispanic, not I'm black. Like, I'm what the fuck? What about that? I forgot both. Like, we all the same people. Anyways, so this black woman and this white woman. Are we good? <laughs> okay. Oh, God. One was black and white and one was black. I feel like I feel like they low-key have a point because we had a whole argument once about how I'm not really black. So I oh. I kind of I'm down with them on the terminology. I said Natalie was not black to prove a point because she is from at her she's from Africa, and I was saying that she should embrace that. That's what black but that's, is the umbrella. But I, yeah, and I was just saying American. to get your attention because I kept stop, feeling like I was talking in circles of saying. But I so, feel like so that. How many black black story? Yeah, we'll talk about this later. We will we will address that, and you guys can all. I just feel like that leans towards with their argument. That's fine, and, and you can feel that way. And then the. Wait, I want to hear this. And the mixed lady was very fair skinned and she had paid for her groceries with a check and the cashier lady just took her check and was like, okay, thank you. See you next time. And then when her sister-in-law, was her sister-in-law, she came up, you said stepsister. She came next, wow. who was the black lady. That's really going to change your life. Why are you doing that? I'm going to whip you. <laughs> I don't see how that changed the story. My bad. I just want to be correct. <laughs> So, um, the black lady came up and she was paying for her groceries and she whipped out her checkbook and the, the cashier lady was like, oh, mm, I need to see some ID or two forms of ID. Yeah. And, uh, exactly. <laughs> who cares right. about two forms of ID? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, I barely but, have my ID. So she, you know, wasn't trying to cause a scene and she basically went over, she, Explain how she went over the internal dialogue about like how she could handle the situation and what the outcome could be because the 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 setup she was a white cashier and then she said it was like two old white well, ladies behind, behind her. her. It was funny when she said that everybody was like, "Oh, oh shit, <laughs> what they about to say?" <laughs> like Look, she ain't got no damn hope. <laughs> so um, then you know she was basically going through all this internally and then she provided the lady with the ID and. Something else ended up happening. Oh, the, so then the sister steps in and was like, ma'am, like, why are you doing this to her? And she's like, oh, this is company policy. And she's like, no, it's not because I just used my checkbook and you didn't ask for that. And then she was like, Walmart. And then she, so then the, the cashier was like, so she was like, no, well, I know you. So that's why. And then the lady was like, I just moved here. So no, you don't know me because I haven't actually really shopped here. However, she's lived in this community for years. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of like. It sounds like reality. Mm -hmm. And so then the late, so then that happens and the old ladies in the back are like, what the hell? What the hell are you doing to her? Like, why did you do that? And so then the point was, is that white people feel, you know, they feel this guilt. Like, oh my God, how do I help you with my privilege? And it's like, <laughs> use your privilege to, to make. To do something. To yeah, to do something. Like, just, you, like, Speak understand that you have it. You you did not clearly found this country. You know, there's like this personal attachment that's like you, you didn't have. It's like, not your yeah, like, like it's not your shit. But right. It's like, but they have the personal attachment because there's privilege there. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> understand that you have the privilege, and then just like I mean, yeah. That's so why that I said my solution, my first solution popped in my head is white people talking to white people. Yeah. About um, what we emphasize white people. Talking to white people, people about to what yourself. this is because I feel like black people have you know been been and tried multiple different a plethora of different types. <laughs> How do you want me to put it? Of solution and that 
is really frustrating. And and it's not like it's this one person that's been fighting for racism, right? Like it's it's an entire quote unquote race of people fighting for this. And black people are tired. And and before you come before you come for a black person for posting something about Black Lives Matter or whatever, like how about you just ask them how they're doing and how they're feeling? And why don't you try being a friend first and treating them like a human being like yourself instead of recognizing that they're black and they're just posting it because they're black. They're posting they're it angry. because they're hurting they're and, and they're angry and they're tired and there's reasons behind that. And so if you stop, once you stop treating black people like black people. Whoa, whoa, what does that even mean? Stop, as in, like, discriminating, as in, like, stop discriminating or, oh, okay. against them in the <laughs> in like, those oh, ways. <laughs> no, because that was a whole different topic. Because then I was gonna be like, "What is like a black?" Well, yeah, person? we can have a whole different conversation about that. But I feel like the whole point, right, is that racism is alive and well, and That's you know it. Thing. I know it. You know it. And the way that you can help is by yeah. speaking up about it. I think the funny and doing thing that. about racism and race didn't know I was black until somebody told me. I knew I was black. My, me and my brother, he used to make me compare our skin colors. But somebody he was a, told you. He was a lighter, dark skin but than someone, me. But someone told, told, told you told that. You, you didn't that, just come up and be like, oh, I'm black. No, mm-hmm. somebody told you. But you I also black. grew up around Abdul's mother, who was Kwanzaa, black, everything, <laughs> everywhere, Hakima. Scarlett Lewis, or my ass everybody was But colored, again, is that's what she's you know, telling you, someone told you. Yeah. Because, I mean, when I went in elementary school, I had friends, I had crushes on little white boys. I didn't think nothing of it. I, it was a boy. He was cute to me at yeah. the time, and I, that's what I pursued. I had my, my best friend was a white, a boy, was a white girl, and you you were black. she was my best friend, and I had no problem. I, I, don't, I think that was when I realized I was black was when I had that crush on Pete no, Jarrell. I told him who it was, and he thought it was his friend. And I'm like, no, it was Stephen. Stephen, I'm not Stephen. Yeah, Stephen. Okay. Ca- I ha- yep. Casillas. Oh, yeah, I had a crush. Oh, Stephen. Hey. And, and, and it was in elementary school when we were innocent. My um, first crush was a white boy. And the first I have a crush on a white, white boy, boy right now. I have a crush on a white boy. Mm-hmm. I told Jarrell because he was supposed to be my brother cousin. I could trust him. He thought I was talking about Stephen Lou. And there's nothing wrong with Stephen Lou. <laughs> Stephen Lou just was that Crystal's, Crystal's brother. brother. <laughs> and he's like, you gotta find that's my that's my friend. I'm gonna tell him and blah blah blah. So he, you know, he went on that and he was just like, but he's Asian. And I'm like, you is not Asian. What are you talking about? He's, he's, he's white and Mexican. Oh, yeah. Guys, and then I like Jesse, too. What? Why do you, you have to whisper why? that? Why what do you mean you never had it? I don't think I have. Like a fucking you don't think one. David is... Oh, he is. <laughs> 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 it's like... Somebody doesn't really like um, I don't know my colors, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what color is he? I was so confused. I'm just so... <laughs> I forgot about him. So confused. Oh, I don't be confused. I'm confused. Back to the subject. I feel like I like the boys. Yeah. I right? like, I, I like had a crush on the United Nations over here. You have a crush on Julian, <laughs> Asian Julian? I know. Like, I also Julian. had a crush on Julian, Asian Julian. Hey, Julian. Julian. Hey. Hey, Julian. Hey, Julian. Hey, Julian. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's cute. You right. Yeah. You know what else I thought was Every really cute? Bryce. 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 Just Bryce like Turner. Turner. Bryce, Bryce Turner. Bryce Turner. Bryce Turner. Great boy. But we can't mention Bryce, Bryce without oh. mentioning Jeffrey Karahama. Oh my god. Why can't you? <laughs> um, we, don't need to, we don't need to bring up that name. We do need to bring Jeffrey him up because he is okay. Jeffrey Karahama. Stop it. He's so cute. But do you guys want to hear my explanation why I told Natalie she wasn't? Okay, before oh, yeah. before she tells the story, can I just say that I didn't bring that up in spite, and I didn't bring it up because I'm angry about it. I'm not angry about it. I'm glad that we have this had this conversation because it helped shape me and change a lot of the ways that I think about the world. So, first of all, in the context, we were very drunk when this conversation. Wait, Natalie's African. That might help too. 
Well, yeah, you the context and, and the context is my family. dad is okay. from Africa, he's from Togo, and my mom is from LA. Okay. So I am a mixed <laughs> person. Okay. You mix that uh so Togo growing with that up, LA maker, right? Cali I'm Hallie She Hallie. tried to put me Hallie. in formation. Hallie. I appreciate that. <laughs> but I've actually she's not so been in formation with Beyonce. So I'm that's not cool. in formation. She's, she's I get in formation when I'm sad. So I last noticed week that. Or two, if I play Beyonce, y'all should know, like, there's depression. <laughs> guys, I'm not <laughs> when I play Beyonce, you guys need to know, like, we should call her. Like, I don't get sad with her. Beyonce. Are you going to finish your Okay, show? anyways, so... Growing up, like, so I had met Natalie, right? And I'm like, oh my god, okay, this girl. And clearly, <laughs> oh, she was excited about that. Clearly, oh my god, I've never she... like ever been like, like since I met her, I was like, no, she's black. Whenever I say black, I'm including Natalie in that, right? I think as I began to get older and be educated on like the world and all this stuff, I started to be like, whoa, Natalie has this really cool part of her in that her family is from Africa. And if she goes back, like if she goes to Africa, she's going to go to her family's home where her family has lived in Africa. And I just thought that that was so... (laughs) (laughs) And I just thought that that was so special. It was something I never thought before until we were like a little bit older. And I started to be like, so when people like ask Natalie, like, I mean, clearly I think she's black. I've never been like, we're black and this is our African friend. Like, I was like, no, we are our black, we are black, girl, we are sisters. I do but as she as my African friend. As, I mean, I Sorry. think I, like, I agree with that <laughs> immediately, like, because I'm like, I don't see that. I was like, oh yeah, we're all black. And then there's all that shit that's underneath it. I think as I became older, I was like, wait, that's really unique and special mm-hmm. that Natalie can say that. And so then. We would be out, and she'd like so, you know, like, and then she's just like, "Yeah, I'm black and white." And I'm like, "This girl's a bitch." I mean, you <laughs> are, but I'm like, how beautiful is that to tell someone like, "I'm African. My family lives in Togo." Like that is like, fuck. Because then I started to think, I'm like, well, if someone's like, "What are you?" I'm like, "I'm black." Maybe some And white. then you can, of course, then people were like, well, we're all from Africa. And I was like, well, yeah, we can have that general conversation. I am from the continent of, Af- like, what the fuck? Like, there's, there's no, like, connection. if I go, like, maybe someone could look at me and be like, hey, you probably were from this part. But there's not that connection of my family is there. I have a home there. Like, that is, I grew up in that culture. You know what I mean? Like, I had that experience. It's I'm black and I can go back to slavery. And then, of course, because we know where slaves come from. Of course, they came from Africa. But it's this, like, very distant, not tangible thing at all. And so I started to be like, oh, fuck, like, what is making her do, like, what is making it not, like, because I'm like, clearly you grew up African, you know what I mean? Like, clearly you grew up with an African man, and you lived in, like, you grew up with this. It wasn't like, well, yeah, my dad's African, but we're American and not also attached to that. It was like, no, you're, there's an attachment to it. And then I started thinking about my friends, I'm like, my Haitian friends, they're, Yes, they consider them black, but if you ask them, they're like, I'm Haitian. Oh, yeah. I'm Ethiopian. I'm all these things. So I was like, kind of like, well, what is making like Natalie like not like make that connection? What is making her kind of umbrella herself under this like very generalized thing, which she falls under that generalization, but there's this very special thing that I'm like, do you get an almost well, privilege like that you that you can you be can connected in that line. way when there's people that are searching for that like connection and so I was like embrace that and love that and I think like I think I kind of internalized as like is there some kind of like self-hate does she feel like if she's African she's not been accepted by black people and I think after talking to her that was in fact her experience you know it was like because then I would think about it, I'm like well yeah how like when I would meet Somali I would, and I people, wouldn't agree I would not agree that there was self-hate <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that. Sorry, I wasn't saying there was self hate. No, no, no. I never self-hate. held it, hated the African part. No, of I wasn't saying that you were like, yes, I hated myself. I was saying that I think you had experiences with black people where they were not, you know what I mean? Like, where they were not accepting of you if you were like, I'm African. So I, that's how I internalized. I was like, well, maybe it's to like fit in, you know what I mean? Like, it's so much easier if I'm to say I'm black than explaining that. And I'm not saying that that is truth that is why I had the conversation with her because I was like what is it that is not like because I guess for me I was like 
yeah, if I could be more than than, than a descendant of a slave, mm -hmm. that I would wear that very proudly. Mm -hmm. And when someone asked me, I would say that. And that would be my, mm -hmm. not to say that it's right or wrong, but I was like, that was that's what I would say if I had the, and it's, a, a, the chance to say that. And so in order, because we were talking and I was like, no, 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 I'm not like trying to take you away that you are not black, but I had to end up saying that, like, to be like, can you, like, are you hearing me? I'm not, like, fucking clearly you're black. Like, <laughs> this is very clear. And we're, it's, it's so, I'm I never like, walk away from that conversation feeling black. I'll just tell you that. I walked away from that conversation feeling like I am different and I'm not a part of that community or culture and that I am, quote unquote, African American. And I'm okay with that. If, if that makes other people feel better, no, that's, not. that's okay with me if that's how you would like to identify that. I'm not saying that that's how I identify myself, but I feel like if that makes other people feel better, that's okay. But with my experience, when you grow up, when people are going <laughs> to you all the time because you're African, that's not, that's not something to be proud of. And I don't, and people make the assumption that I'm black. So it was both me and it's the easier. world mm -hmm. just assuming that I'm black. And this is the culture that I'm in because my parents were never really together. So it's not like I spent a whole lot of time at my dad's house. And my yeah, I do have family in Africa, but I didn't grow up with them. I grew up with a white mom. So there are things that are special about my heritage that I am proud of. But when you look at, I think, holistically at who I am, and I think I would love to do a podcast with other mixed people about what it feels like to walk in and out of different cultures like that. Um, that's, I think, it was, for me, the conversation itself was a little hard for me because it, it comes off to me as you're not allowed to have this because you're so special. It, it almost feels like someone is placing this privilege on you. Like here, it's this privilege that you're African. But when you live in it, in the skin, it doesn't feel like privilege. And so that's a hard thing to walk through and to grow up in. And I don't know, I'm proud of being African now. I appreciate having the conversation with you then because I also didn't think I was, I didn't think I was privileged because I was more light skinned than other people. I didn't think, you know, I didn't recognize those things. So I recognize them now, but I think it's a layered conversation, and I think it's a conversation that um, doesn't have a solution to it. I think it's something that is going to come down to, if I choose to identify myself black one day and African American the, the next day, or African the day after that, that's my choice yeah. to yeah. do so. And I if that makes you feel uncomfortable, yeah. at, at some point, we can have that conversation like just how Yana had that conversation with me because it started to make her feel uncomfortable because she saw the privilege and she saw how cool it was that I'm African. No, I don't we got to like have that, that conversation. No, 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 it wasn't. But it's, it's a personal thing at the end of the day, I think. Oh, hi. Okay. Okay. No, it wasn't even I saying, and I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have used the word, I'm not saying privilege as in like, in general, I would just kind of like, if I could say where my heritage from, I would say. No, I can see it that. Was how, a, it was more like a. I totally see that. I, I can always that. see that. And getting an understanding of, oh, I just want to understand why. And you could just be like, bitch, because that's what I felt like that day to say. It could have been that. It wasn't to say, no, Natalie, you should. I was just saying, it's beautiful. And if that is, if there was a reason why, I mean, like you've been saying, like when you said you're African and people would be like, you live in a bush. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're just like, what the fuck? Like, no, like, I don't. And that's what you've placed now and made people feel. And I think we even talked about, like, in high school, how, like, the black girls didn't accept you. They didn't fucking accept me either. But you know what I mean? There was, like, there yeah. was, so there was different. something. Yeah. And so I was, I like, trying to figure out, because I'm, like, if that's you know what it is, is it, if it's even me personally or someone around you making you feel like, like you're not allowed to say that, then I wanted to have that conversation. They were the black so that it wasn't like, I'm like, I don't I don't know. I wasn't saying, Natalie, you're so ashamed. It was just like, I just want to understand why that is because it is your personal choice. Who the fuck? You can say I'm a fucking human being and not 
take on anything. I'd be like, that's your right. You're from every country. I just, I personally. <laughs> I'm I, not from every continent in Africa. I okay, personally, yeah. as your best friend, and have gone through. Are you just taking that title? Things. or? <laughs> I'm joking. What? I'm <laughs> joking. Natalie secret hate, secretly hates Lesnar. I wanted to understand because there was a point where I'm like, there's a reason, and like I said, it could be hate, it could be fuck. I honestly just fucking wanted. It, I didn't know what it was. So I was like, I'm having this conversation to like understand. But now, but then it's like to say, I just didn't want the pretense to be like everyone's black in here because we came from slaves. But not Natalie. Like no, like it wasn't to say like we are all black and you're African. The way that I had to, I that came about it was like. But I think, but I think what it, when you have those types of conversations with people, I think it's hard because we all have this, I feel like this innate thing that we want to be right or that we want to convince other people of what, what we think is right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a careful balance of telling people what you think in your opinion without Telling them what to think yeah. and what their opinion should be, and at the time, that's how I felt. Now, after I had that conversation with Ayana, I think it definitely changed the way that I thought about my identity and how I identified. And I don't think, but I was also like, I don't know, eighteen. Yeah. Like you my young. mind, oh, wow. I, it just wasn't like we were young, young and no, drunk. No, I was young and drunk on a beach, and like <sighs> I. Hadn't really taken the time. All, okay, all these things happen to you, but do you? I hadn't taken the time to actually think about: Am I black or am I African? Like that just never because. But I mean, I was also doing a lot of other things, so I wasn't filling my time with these theological questions. Now I've been single for seven years. I have time to think about these things. But I, you know, I never, I never thought about the fact that it was could be seen as a privilege. That I was from Africa and that I've, that I'm able to connect that history, it never crossed my mind. And I think because it never crossed my mind, I have to recognize that that that's a privilege. That's evidence of, of privilege. my privilege, right? right? Like I've never had, <laughs> I've never had to think about that. But it wasn't until someone brought it up to me that I thought, oh, they're right. Yeah, and I think. Yeah. In a situation, like it could be something as somebody smiling and saying hello to you as opposed to somebody else. Like, yeah. sometimes I think, like, right now, I've, I've contemplated, I'm like, am I appropriating my own hair? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I honestly, I've honestly thought about that so much with a, a par- with people like saying people, everyone's appropriating everyone's culture. I've thought about that since that conversation has been brought up to me of I cannot trace my roots back to this certain place of people picking and choosing what they think is cool from different cultures and just labeling it African which 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 is what I thought we all had a problem with (laughs) but labeling it African African, country it's a continent continent, the most diverse continent in the world right and then saying well this makes me African because I'm wearing a I don't feel African in this, but I thought. I've thought but I, I think I've thought about that. Now, do I necessarily think that black people are appropriating culture? <laughs> no, it's a little different. It's a little different because, right, that is your ancestry, yeah. that is your heritage, and there is something that interrupted you from knowing. Right, that. it's not your choice. It's really, it's literally, I. Right, it's, it's not. Like, there's a missing piece. Like, right, yeah. so just let me so, know. So I've thought about it. With my, it's not but even kids. I, I don't know. It's just like. <laughs> Shit made in China, probably. I have a probably a African ass dashiki made in China on right now. Right. Like, <laughs> but I think I don't know. Right? It's very weird. I think it's weird also to be African though. in a in a black culture that doesn't recognize all of you. Yeah, because think about does that it, make like, sense? Like they they recognize what they want to recognize. Like, they recognize the hairstyle, or they recognize the dress, or they recognize things. But they 
Like, why haven't, like, for me, why, I want to know, like, why within the community, why we haven't apologized to each other for things that we've done to each other. Like, why, like, I, like, why have black people and African people not, like, been like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry that I sold my family or you, your family. I you don't want an apology. Personally, but, I don't feel like that's totally fine. I don't, and I feel like or that in conversation a way to happened. Justify this survey survey because, in a way, I don't blame wrong. Africans for slavery. Right. That's the if thing. Like, no, I don't this, know that many black people who do in a, in a in a small way. Because I feel like it, we didn't create it. We didn't force people into slavery. We didn't enslave people for centuries. We didn't enforce Jim Crow laws. We, like, we didn't create any of that. So, we all in this but I don't think but slavery was has been around for a while. They true. did have slavery yeah, in Africa, and but the con it wasn't an economic thing. Right. That's I'm not talking different. about that, but okay. I am talking about because I think that it exists within people of color, this culture that we're not all the well, same. I think it's because people don't and we're not to, all the same on some level. Yeah, but I we think kinda are. it's it's I don't think that that comes down to slavery. I think that's just something that I, I don't I don't even know the root, but from the from what I've heard or what I've seen online and the conversations that I've had, it's not even like oh well Africans, you know, well, told the white people that, you know, that's yeah. the only reason we're here. No, it's not even just Africans and blacks. I mean, or American black people. It's like Haitians, Jamaicans. Right, there's a diaspora. It's this yeah. whole, it's a, a all black people but who it's, really just clash. And it's, it's, I don't know what it is. But I don't really know. Though? But to, yeah, but, yeah, there's something. That, there was actually some, some African woman online who was going off and saying that black people were appropriating African culture. And I'm just like, how when that's because our roots too that's our roots here i think that i think that there's a feeling there of if you really cared that much about africa and african people then what are you doing to stop what's happening in in africa right there hasn't been this great movement of people from the diaspora back to africa think, to help well, we're well, exactly like we like we have like, our own problems right. here too. and that's that's totally fine but i think but that's, that's the, might be part of where that's okay. coming even from. though they're like we think right. it's like it's their issue and it's our issue over here but you, i like I, said, I, I don't view it that way i just think oh, well i mean I don't know. like when i like was younger like if someone was somalian i wasn't like oh i i labeled them as such like you were somalian you're ethiopian you know what i mean I didn't really include them as being black until I was like, oh, well, fuck, I guess, like, when I was older, I was like, well, fuck, shit, I guess you are black, too, you know? Yeah. But I kind of, like, because that's what they, you know what I mean? That's what they, like, they have their communities of Ethiopia, you know what I mean? It's like, they did that, or they have these, like, communities. It wasn't, like, black people. Like, when I said, thought of black people, it was, like, But on the other kids? part, on the other mm-hmm. side, I think you would hear that argument from African people of, I came into America. And there's this distinction here. I'm not black because I'm from Africa. So I'm African. So I have to create my own yeah. community. So I think it exists on I both feel like I'm sides. I'm super guilty of doing that because I definitely told Jakinda that he can't be black. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And it's like, no, but I feel like a lot of I, I, I'm, I was being playful when I told him that. But I feel like. I don't know. I maybe I should just shut up. In this I think there's a mixture of cultural. I don't and actual. Yeah, things. I don't. I don't mix in it because I had like whereas kids coming up, like you had an Ethiopian Somalian friend, or you knew somebody who was Ethiopian Somalian. You know the black kids made fun of them because oh you smell different, you dress different. That wasn't me. Like my best friend was. Well, all of my friends were either Ethiopian or Somalian. I went to their house. I just, you know, kicked but it with them. But did you see them as Somalian and Ethiopian only and not black or black? No, I, I seen them as 
black people and however they identified themselves. They told me I'm Ethiopian or I'm Somalian or no, I'm not Ethiopian, I'm Eritrean or whatever you yeah. just pronounce it where they get real super offended if you call them Ethiopian. But it so means- it's like, I, I, for me, it was well, whatever you called yourself, that's what I identified you as because me being ignorant, I, I thought I didn't know the difference anyway. So it was just more so just like, okay, well, you said you're Somalian. That's what you are. They're, they weren't coming at me and saying, oh, I'm black. But I will say that when I would go to like Crawford, where the African uh, community was very Americanized, I had a problem and I was like, oh, why are you guys trying to act black? But a lot of it, I felt, was going towards what you were saying about you have this privilege of being from a, your root, like, yeah, right there's there. like a disconnect. And it's next. like, why would you even come here and try to embrace this shit? Because it's not even real. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want this shit. <laughs> so, like, I felt like yeah. that and the same. Because I, and also it's because, like, you like have your culture. own shit. You have Africa. You have fucking Africa. <laughs> I have. They don't the have leftovers. Africa. They have Somalia. Or, but, they have, but for me, like, it was like, we have the leftovers of what's. Black America right now, right. and we just and all right. that we have as Black people is basically leftovers because we couldn't be a part of a society that put us here. Yeah, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like we had like to really. It. It's kind of like a selfish That's thing. Like we home. want this for ourselves because we didn't have anything else. Like every time there was something, we couldn't be a part of it. So we kind of had to come up with our own thing. Whereas like Africans. More than I, I, from what I know, have more of their own thing, have more of their roots than American black people. So it's like, why would you come here and try to assimilate to a culture that is Made assimilation? Up. Like, it's <laughs> not real. Go, but can we go back to I get what you're whole, saying. No, no. I get the, the whole, whole argument whole... that I posted out with police. People though that or that we've been taught to assimilate well, yeah, into yeah, this yeah. culture. I, like you come to America and you are taught to assimilate into this place. And you're and the whole rest of the world sees your dark skin and my dark skin, and so they lump us together. Mm-hmm. So that's why I kind of on some level I feel like this has to be a discussion between black people and African people, right? Like yeah. there's not a, really a discussion between African people and white people or black people and white people. Because they all see us the same. same. So it's yeah, within ourselves. Saying, how do we have so these conversations? Like in the but I do feel like in, in order for us to be us for us to be unified, we do need to have a conversation. Okay. I I don't know how big of a problem it is because I have seen people of all backgrounds come together, but when it comes to trying to like actually do something that that does tend to be a problem. And I but mean, I don't think that it's really stopping us right now. No. But it's a conversation that does need to take place. And I think I think this conversation, just for you guys to know, that I would include the diaspora of, of yeah. people around the world, not just people in Africa and people in America, right? Like, this has to include Haitians and Jamaicans and, and people all and in South America. America. Like, yeah, oh, it has let's to get the afro Latina clue. But the that. thing is... Uh, no, 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 no. But I don't know. No. I don't know. I think it was just kind of, it's a very interesting thing to think about, talk about, and be a part of, of, okay, well, how do I kind of grow up with this culture at home, but in every other facet of my life, I am seen as a black person, and I'm, people assume me to be that way, and I, a lot of it's going to have to come up to do with your I, upbringing. I don't know if people see. I don't like, even know. If I'll use it. someone like Noel. I think that he goes to predominantly white. I think people are like Noel is African, and that they separate that from black. I, me personally, yeah. because I think white people are like, oh, cool African. That's why they want to fucking go there and like adopt kids and weird shit. Like when I'm like, they're you know they're spread. They're spread. Are you yeah. they're going after? Yeah, they're here, and you don't see them, and they make and then even they make it like. Oh, this person's African. It's like, but I think it also so how, has why to is that deal, person different than the black? You know, because I think it has to do with what age that person was when they came here and that person's upbringing. 
there are people that are, if you're coming from a two-parent household of two strong African people, yeah, you're probably going to act and sound more African than you are black. But for someone like me, who's a mixed race person that grows up in a white person's home, yeah, I'm seen as a black person. And that's just my experience. Yeah. Maybe I won't speak for all mixed people, but like that was just my experience. Mm-hmm. I didn't really live Africa at home all the time. And so it didn't manifest itself in yeah. other areas of my life too. So it's like, and then I think there is this thing where people are like, oh, they're African. So maybe they're it's a, like a little bit different. It's a little bit different, but on a large scale. Yeah. It's like we all black. We're still really dark skinned. Yeah. And we're still, there's still racism that exists. Yeah. And even more so, I think if you look at Africa, you see even more so of what colonialism does and more than even just in the u.s yeah like you see a whole continent of people that were mixed up and divided and put back together in ways that that's not how they naturally separated yeah. themselves and it hurt it's hurt an entire con- continent of people and in fact in effect has hurt the entire world yeah so that's why i, I want to have these conversations with black people and african people to just say you can identify as a black person and i can identify as a African person, but if we're coming together under the title of Black Lives Matter, I'm going to say that your Black Lives Matter just as much as my Black Lives yeah. Matter because that cop might not know when they pull me over that I'm African. Yeah. They don't know. And they could still shoot you because. Yeah. Oh, well, let's close out now before Kendall just exited it. <laughs> Exodus it? Exodus it. it. Whatever um, y'all kind of fucking y'all drank, I don't need to be on that. This yeah, so. was a very um, heavy. heavy and emotional and shot us up begging topic. Um, no, bitch. I'm glad that you guys are here yeah. and we, we were able to have this discussion. Um, we're going to split this up. So it's going to be two episodes. Don't know why I put my hands up underneath. <laughs> like everyone can see. And I held it too. Can um, I sing my tagline at the end? Yes. The yes. Can you guys please stay hydrated? Because it's <laughs> hot out here in these streets. It is. And hot. always stay moisturized. You know when we talk about the butters. And most butters importantly, and stay black slash African <laughs> slash Jamaican <laughs> slash all black that. Jamaican slash melanated. Slash melanated. <laughs> all right. Whoop, whoop. <laughs>